Second Ezra chapter eight, verse one. And he answered me, saying, The Most High hath made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the High Priest and Savior of Israel. And Rachakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honest the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Are you Akiyam making your bodies a living sacrifice? Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is exclusive. And I just want to go into this word exclusive because the kingdom of heaven is, as we just read, it's a world for few. There's This current world is a world for many. This is a world for whores, heathen, sodomites, weirdos, atheists, all sorts of just uh, people that lack faith and that have absolutely no reverence or fear for their creator. Here it is, they're enjoying creation, but they don't acknowledge the creator. It's vexing and disrespectful and it's irritating to any man of the Lord because you're surrounded by people that have no uh, understanding and appreciation for Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, but I want to get this word exclusive because this is this is what we have to look forward to, Akim. This is uh, the dictionary. It says exclusive adjective, restricted or limited to the person, group, or area concerned. And that group concern is the nation of Israel. You people of so-called Negro and Native Indian descent, we're an exclusive club, and that's who the kingdom of heaven is for. It's not for everyone. It's for a very small amount of men and. Within the nation of Israel, there's 144,000 kings and priests that are going to be presiding over the kingdom. All of the, the issues of government, economics, family, trade, you name it. It's going to be in control by righteous men, righteous judges that fear the Most High. And we're going to be a monument, okay, which is what the word Zion means. This is uh, Adam Online. It says, mid-15th century exclusive, so as to exclude 1560s that excludes of monopolies, rights, franchises, etc. from 1760s of social circles, clubs, etc. unwilling to admit outsiders. And that's that's the kingdom in a nutshell, man. Unwilling to admit outsiders. It tells you in Revelation, let me get this real quick. This is the book of Revelation chapter 11 and I'll start at the top. The point is in verse 2. It says and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of the Most High, and the altar, and them that worship therein. So let's find out who can worship at the temple of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And these Gentiles here are not talking about Israelites. These are the actual Gentile nations. They're not going to be allowed within the temple. And right now, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai dwells in the men of the Lord. We're all hoping to be pillars in the temple of Yahweh. So when you go into the kingdom, there's not going to be heathen with us. There's not going to be, it's going to be an exclusive club. And anyone teaching that heathens can repent and be saved and, you know, baptized, this is all nonsense. This is all Catholicism, which the word Catholicos goes back to uh, universal. That's what that's what the, the doctrines of this world, which goes back into the second address eight. Let me read that again real quick. It says, and he answered me again saying, the most high had made this world for many. And that this world includes religious orders. It, it includes governments. It includes, you know, political office, ideologies. All of these things of this world are for many. Anybody could be a Christian. Anybody could be a Muslim. Anybody could be a, a Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever, whatever madness that people are trying to take the scriptures and make their own doctrines. When you go into the scriptures, it's clear that it's only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's all throughout from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. But back in Adam Online, this is exclude, okay? This is uh, to shut out, which X, when you put X in front of a word, it means out. And the root word, clued, it means to keep out, to shut, to hinder. So basically, exclusive means everyone else is shut out. This is for a small group of people, and the rest are shut out. There's no way for them to add themselves unto the temple of the Lord. This is back in 2nd Ezra 8. This is verse 2. It says, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that the gold cometh of, 
even so is the course of this present world. So here the angel is making a similitude. He's saying, look, look how much clay there is. Look how much mud there is. Look how much dirt there is and compared to gold. That's what it's going to be like in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be a great multitude of heathen and unimportant people and a small remnant. That's who the kingdom of heaven is for. And it tells you in Isaiah that a man of the Lord is going to be made more precious than fine gold. So why is gold precious? First of all, it's rare. It's not in abundance. Anything that's rare creates scarcity and scarcity creates value. But gold is also valuable because it can, you know, conduct electricity. It's really good for your health. You know, there's all sorts of intrinsic value to gold. And a man of the Lord is going to be, man, in the kingdom to, to come across a man of the Lord, women are going to faint. Children are going to have action figures of the 144,000. We're going to be the true celebrities because that's, that's the world to come. That's what's for a few. And it's exclusive. Verse 3. There be many created, but few shall be saved. And this goes back to Matthew. Yahushua said this. This is uh, St. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Right, that's an exclusive club. This world to come is for the few that are chosen. And we see all of these people that are called. They come into the truth. They fall out of the truth. And then you have people that read the scriptures that know absolutely nothing what the Bible's talking about. And, you know, they, they might think they're called, but they're certainly not chosen. They're not, the Most High is not dealing with them. He's not giving them his name. He hasn't shared the Holy Spirit with them. They're just bugged out. They're, you know, going back to Ezra's, they're, they're part of the multitude that was born in vain. They're part of that mud that's likened unto earthen vessels, but we're likened unto that gold that's extremely rare. This is Second Peter chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, right? Everything that we see right now is about to be dissolved through nuclear missiles, man. Everything is going to go up in smoke. Every building, every school, every street, every road, every business is going to be completely wiped off the face of the earth. So what manner of conversation ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Why? Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, right? And why is righteousness going to dwell in the new heavens and the new earth? Because it's going to be ruled by the few that fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, those elect judges that are going to judge everything spiritually and righteously, man. There's not going to be injustice okay everything that we do to the heathen they have it coming everything that's coming to us is rightfully ours in the first place it's not going to be out of order there's not going to be any false balances the economy is not going to be based on fiat currency the family structure is not going to be out of order we're not going to feed people fake food are right, you heathen we can feed you you know animals that die of themselves we can feed you slop but we're not going to have genetically modified we're not going to genetically modify plants and that, that's complete madness man we're we're going to have a kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness. Why? Because it's exclusive. It's just for us. The earth was made for us, and we're going to inhabit it. And we're going to enjoy it and reap the benefits, starting with Yahawashai Hamashiach. This is letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Right? We don't have a continuing city here because this world is for many. This is a world for for heathen. This is a world where women can rule over men. This is a world where you're completely disenfranchised if you speak out in righteousness, even if you're a heathen. If you're a heathen speaking, you know, scripturally speaking about, you know, natural foods, natural health remedies, if you're speaking out against the corruption of the government, you're going to be persecuted, man. This, this is a place where the righteous are made of prey. So if this is a world for many, that means the few people that believe in the Lord this is, this is not our world, man. This is not our rest, as it tells you in Micah. So you knowing that, you should feel some kind of way if you're of the world. That's why the scripture tells you that if you love the world, you're at enmity with the Father. Because clearly, this world is not for the small few people that believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is a world in which two men can get married, allegedly, but one man can't marry more than one woman legally. That's complete madness, man. Any, anyone trying to fit in with this world, you're bugged out of your mind. But I want to get this in Joel. Before I get back to that, Ezra, this is uh, the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 16. Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people. Let's find out who his people are. And the strength of the sons of Israel. Verse 17. So shall ye know that I am Yahweh, your power, 
dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. So in the kingdom, no strangers are going to pass through. You got these, these bug outs teaching that Edomites are going to be saved if they repent and they're going to get a, a lighter slavery because they rejected their fathers. Listen, they're, they're not going to be any heathen thriving in the kingdom. The heathen are going to be building up the kingdom through manual labor. They're not going to rest in Jerusalem, man. That's not what Jerusalem is for. The scripture says, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy. The word holy, kodash in the Hebrew, means set apart. It means severed. All right, we're a holy people. And right now, this current world is for many. This is an unholy world because it's it's a mixture, man. That's what the word Babylon means. Babal means confusion. And the word confusion, you have the prefix kan, which means together or with. And you have fusion, which means mixture. This world is really a world of babal. It's a world of confusion and mixture. And the kingdom is going to be holy. There's going to be, listen, the land that's allotted to you and your family, it's going to be in your line forever. It's not, there's not going to be any confusion. Uh, the tribe of Benjamin is not going to get wiped out again. The tribe of, you know, listen, man, the kingdom is going to be a well-oiled machine because, again, it's going to be governed by the few. It's going to be an exclusive club for a very small amount of people. And you know how Jake feels when they get some Jordans that nobody else has. They're just like, look, look, you can go to Foot Locker. You're not going to find these. You can go online. You're not going to find these. You, Jake just feels some type of way when he has something that another Jake doesn't have. That's just, it just makes his teeth whiter. And in the kingdom of heaven, the 144,000 are going to have an everlasting position of righteousness that not only can no heathen ever take claim of, but even two thirds of the nation of Israel, just to be a regular Israelite, you're not going to be in the presence of the men of the Lord. We're Abaratazah, we're of that number. We're going to be, again, the celebrities of the kingdom, an exclusive club. Now, getting back to this Ezra's I'm going to skip down to verse 50. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. And that's what we see here. We have a bunch of losers that don't fear the Lord, and they walk in great pride. And they're proud for absolutely no reason. These people have accomplished nothing with their lives. They're broke. They stink. They worship a woman that's completely defiled and has no respect for them. But Jake, you can't tell Jake anything, man. Jake wants to, to stay here and keep this place going, and they're going to be destroyed. It says, But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you is paradise open. So let's stop right there. It says, seek out the glory for such as be like thee. What does that mean? This is an exclusive club. All right. Again, the scriptures are not for everyone. Faith is not for everyone. It's an exclusive opportunity for the men of the Lord. It says, for unto you, not everybody, for unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteous is made ready. A city is builded. And rest is allowed, yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. And pff, come on, man. Again, Jake will go crazy. Jake will stand in line for some J's, man. But he won't stand in line for perfect goodness and wisdom, for a city with streets paved of gold. That's why, again, this world is for many. Because this world is for people that, that love social media, that love reality television, that love all of these fixed sports games. It, like, just listen, man. This world is for people that, that don't have a kingly mind state. This is for people that, really, this world is for peasants. This world is for people that, that really want to look up to the heathen and keep the heathen in power. And, you know, hey, you're going to get exactly what you deserve real soon. Because Esau is going to come down with that sword. Matter of fact, let me skip on down. Yeah, I'm going to skip down to verse 60. It says, But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them. Right. We've we've defiled the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's why when you read in the book of Ezekiel, it tells you that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to save us, not for our sakes, but because we polluted his name in the sight of the heathen. He, we're going to be saved for the namesake of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is beautiful, man. It says, And we're unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. And judgment is clearly at hand. And our people have no respect or fear for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is, again, why two-thirds are going to be cut off and die. But when you read the prophecy, it tells you that one-third is going to walk through the fire. This, that's why the world to come is for few. It says, verse 62, These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Right, a few good men, an exclusive club. 
It's not for everybody. Just like this ministry, this truth, this word, the name of the Lord is not for everybody on this side. The kingdom of heaven is not going to be for everybody. Again, it tells you in this same book that, you know, Ezra saw a great number of people that were crowned. Man, he saw the 144,000 being crowned for standing so stiffly for the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Now look around. How many men are doing that? How many men are standing stiffly for the name of the Lord? That's an exclusive club, Akim. So if you're part of this, if you're part of, of the ministry, know that you're not only a part of something great on this side, you're going to take part in the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, and you're going to be part of an exclusive club, not for everybody. So Abaratazah, this lesson was edifying to the elect, the exclusive. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechach Wadash. Double honest, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the hopeful elect.